Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today looks at the presenter's record of attending West End plays and musicals, which he managed to attend whilst he was living in London before he was told to go home. I like those big shows. I went to see uh, Cher one time. And I went to see... Uh, Sunday night at the London Palladium? No. Did you ever go there when you were in living in London? London Palladium? Yeah. Oh, no, never. Did you not? Never. Were you never inside the Palladium? No. Why would I go there? I just thought maybe because it's the Palladium and you living in London, you'd say, I must check this place out. I've heard so much about it. I only When I was living in London, I, over, I only ever went to four plays and one, two, three musicals. The musical I went to was... The, and as Miss Saigon, fact, you walked out No, of. four plays and three musicals, that's it. And of the two plays and one of the musicals, Connellith Hill was in them. Right. And that's one of the reason why I went, because actually he's starring in uh, the lyric on Friday night with the play called uh, Uncle Vanya, uh, Brian Friel's version of Chekhov's Uncle Vanya. And that'll be interesting. And hopefully, maybe I'll talk to him on Friday morning if he's sober. Anyway, not that he's got a problem, of course, like you or I. He doesn't have a problem with drink, but it's notoriously difficult to get actors to come in after the first night because they're always kind of wired up and they like to lie on in the morning. Anyway, I'm going to try and get him to come in because I, th- I admire him greatly. And uh, I went to see him in Stones in His Pockets. I went to see him in that uh, oh, Stone the Crows, is that what you call it? It was in Traf- Trafalgar Theatre with uh, Jimmy Nesbitt. And uh, I went to see him in the best musical I've ever seen is The Producers. He played a wonderful part in that. And uh, the other two... Plays I went to see. Uh, well, the other play I went to see was Glenn Glary Glen Ross, which was wonderful. And the other musical I went to see was Miss Saigon, which was a little cack. Yes. And uh, Les Miserables, which I fell asleep in the middle of. I went home at the interval. Anyway, so uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Because Do you remember you the job I had? Uh, Jimmy Nesbitt. Do you remember Jimmy Nesbitt was a guest on your show, and it was a night after. Just what it brings. I know the job you had. What? <laughs> what was the job? Getting him here. I get them <laughs> uh, uh, in Belfast. And he said to me the night before, he says, Your job is get me out of bed. <laughs> and he says, did. What? He says, <clears throat> You, all right, I'm in here in the morning, whatever time it was, 11 o'clock or something like that's that. Right, yeah. He says, You have to get me out of bed. That's your job. And you thought that was easy. I thought that's okay. <laughs> well, I'll give you a ring. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Little did you know. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> I don't think we should tell that story. Listen to me, Cotton. It was all right. Well, some of it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the the goods, the bits, the bits that we talk about are all right. Pure Isle talk about movies continues, and it emerges that interrupts us, intends to break the habit of a lifetime, break free from the ties that bind him, and sally forth into the world in which we live and go to the movies. Yes, I mean go to the movies and pay at the door and everything. I'm not a great film goer. I don't like the. the you don't the, like anything as far as no, I can see. No, but there's there's a there's a reason. No, so you no. don't like anything. There's a reason why I won't go to the cinema. I know the reason. You have to pay to get in. No, it's not that. What? I will not. I will never go. I will never ever go to the cinema again. It's since you saw Barbara Barbara Stanwyck's breasts. No, it's not that. It scared you. No. What? It's as long as people eat popcorn. Ah, don't be so stupid. And sweets. As long as people queue up to get big buckets of popcorn and trays of Snickers and things like that and take trays into the, the cinema, I'll never be inside a picture house again. Why don't you just ignore them? Because why are people, why are people here pretending to be Americans? They're not pretending to be Americans. That's an just... American thing, and I don't fault the Americans. That's how they started off going to the movies. We're copying the Americans. No, it's because we're we just... We are copying the Americans. It's because we want to be as fat as they are. It's a, it's a, it's a reasonable ambition. And I will never go... But this is what I want to ask you. The first, this is the first time ever I'm looking forward to seeing a particular film. I can't believe it. Yes. Tell me what that movie is. We may, we may all rush to it. What is it? But how am I going to see it? You'll have to go and see it. You'll have to wear blinkers. Tell me what the movie is and I'll describe how you can go and see it. I know ways to go and see movies without can watching you? people eating. What? When we were in America, when you were doing your marathon. Yes. It was just, it was, it was just about to be released. Will you America. tell me what it is? Come on, guess. Uh, Liam Neeson, The Grey. No. That's Hoover. About Hoover? J. Edgar. Don't yeah. go. Is that right? Don't go. That's what I want to ask because you. Because you can't believe the character. The makeup's bad. Eh? You can't believe the character. You've been reading about this, or did you see it? I saw it. Oh, did you see it? Yeah, the where, makeup, where, the makeup where, is bad. Pray tell, where? I saw it in America. Oh, you did, you, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. No, you couldn't have, because it wasn't released. It was released. It wasn't. I was in America two or three weeks longer than you were. 
It was released then. It was released. It's at only the released end. now. It's released it now. It was here. released at the end of November. Oh, don't be silly. It was released at the end of November. You didn't see it. I was just on the plane then. You didn't see it. I did see it. It's all about a fella that has. We a... checked out the date and we said, "Look, we're not going to be here for the release of that." When we all, when we stood looking at the big billboard after you come out, remember the time you when you enrolled in your marathon? Do you remember you were down? You got your wee vest and your. your I can your never back. forget. You know that big place wherever it was. I can never forget. And we come out, there's a huge big billboard, and we, we, we stood, me, you, and the other one, we stood and we read it. And he said, look, we're going to miss that, we'll be away. I saw it there. So how did you see it? I went to see it. Where? It was, I, they saw it not in, in uh, Santa, Santa Monica. You know, you, no, no, you're confused. I'm not confused. You are. You didn't see it. I saw it, it in wasn't Santa Monica. Released. It was. It was released. This is Los Angeles. I saw it. The makeup is too heavy. When he's an older person, you don't believe it, just a man wearing makeup. It's no good. But anyway, what about the actual story? Did, oh, you know the story. No, but do they, how far do they go? He dressed up as a girl. Did he really? Well, I did. I don't know about him. Back to the Billy plays. The presenter is having lots of innocent fun figuring out who is on the radio whilst Lorna is ironing Uncle Andy's shirt or Norman is wandering about the house looking for children to intimidate. The third programme, uh, which is on Friday. There's two other men on. Who are those men? You? Not me? Far too young to be on that. Right. It's 1983, for God's sake. 1984, I was hardly out of kindergarten. Uh, One of them is Sean Rafferty. A genre. Right. Talking about genres. Sure. Who was the other one? Well, let me guess. Go on, guess. Uh, other no. man on the radio, and he was talking to Claire Connery. Talking to her about her fantastic cooking skills. Claire Connery must have been about eight at the time. Uh, so he said, Claire, now we have a word from Claire. Which could be lovely. I'm salivating already. I'm salivating already. But this is not him. I'm not George I'm, Jones. No, no. <laughs> Michael Bagley. George can't salivate. Michael, Michael Bagley's Bagley. TV man, not him. Michael right. Bagley was on television exclusively. It was never on the radio. Really much uh, worth talking about. See, John Bennett. You don't believe? Yes, me. indeed. John Bennett and John. Sean Rafferty right. on the third program. John was talking to Claire, Claire Connery. But you see, this is all great. This is the way the world used to be before everybody went mad and watched Big Brother and everything. But the real world soon encroaches. There's always a man out there speaking pidgin English who's in search of something that is missing from his fire. It's the nature of our people who have come through the troubles. Those who stayed by the fire survived. Yeah, I tell you, I'm looking, I'm looking to be great. I'll be all night running for you and cool fire. Sorry, would you try that in English? What, what did you say there? I, I missed that. A great and an all an all night burner for me up in the cold fire. I'm on the phone, Mum. What does he say? He wants a great and an all night burner for me up in cold fire. For a wee cold fire. How can you? I can't. Tell you, I don't understand what he's saying. Why, why can I not understand what you, he's saying? Because you didn't have grits. Did I not? Oh, you did. What does he want again? Tell me that. No, did that you? Again. Did you grow up? No, you were. A, no, of course, you had a grit. Of course, you had a grit. No, but when you when you became when you became a man, you had anthracite. You. No, no, no. Yes. It was it was ringworm. <laughs> <laughs> I've never lit a fire with anthracite. Did you have a range? At home, uh, d- yes. We had it. Much of my, fa- my right. father used to do. My father used Hugh, to. Hugh, did you have a range? You better involve Hugh. No, no, no never, no. Never had a range. Never no. in my life. Uh, what did you have, Hugh? Just to be cold fires. It's, it's and, you st- cool. and you still have that, so it's uh, it, it's adequate for your needs. Yes, and it, and it's a great for but the grate to be eighteen inches, no bigger than eighteen inches for it. See, what did he say? He needs a grate, an eighteen-inch grate. How come you have to? How come I have to ask you what he's saying? Yeah, but the grate, the grate that the coal, that's the but the coal sits on. Uh, yeah, but just the front of the fire. Uh, yes, it's the front. All right. So, so basket, you've been using the, the basket inside the basket. That, that's the, the basket. basket. Yes, that's right. Yes. You need, ah, you're right. You need a basket. Jeez. And the grate, and the wheel light burner. Well, do you see? Do you see What's the grate? The, well, the the grate is the, is the grate the wee thing that sits in front of the the fire. Do we yes, say? that's right. Yes. Yeah, there you are. You, see, you don't even no, it's know. Not, he doesn't know either. The grate well, is not that. Well, what is the grate? The grate is what the coal rests on. He said that's the, the crib or something. The, what, what did you say it was, you? The basket. The basket. What's he said the that's grate, the basket. Then? I what? thought the grate was the thing that the coal sat oh, on. S- <laughs> no, I agree with you, Jerry. What I am I thought doing? I've been to the universe. What am I that's, doing? Well, your this? father oh. installed them. Well, my father, he was a range fitter. Yeah, well, there you are. You should know a thing or two about it. But them. I do know. But well, I, what do you call the wee I thing that sat in front of the, the fire? But my the, mother. <laughs> <laughs> the wee thing that you... That I was you, thinking of my mother you, this morning. Your brush. No, seriously, I was thinking of my mother this morning. Do you know what she always used to sing? No. No, I, I was going sing. around. Maybe you might have heard me singing this this morning, and you probably wonder why is he singing that. My mother used to always sing, 
Shrimp boats are a coming, the sails are in sight. Shrimp boats are a coming, they'll be dancing tonight. Won't you hurry, hurry, hurry home? Won't you hurry, hurry, hurry home? Shrimp boats are a coming, <laughs> they'll be dancing tonight. Oh, nice. My mother used to sing that. Oh, I used to sit and go, more, mummy, more. <laughs> and she'd say, anyway. put some more coal in the fire. Time for more botched routines involving wounding impressions of some of our greatest sporting and entertainment names. Have these people no respect for achievement at the highest level? Well, no. We can't do a, a, a Sean Connery, I'm afraid. Well, what about Roy Walker and uh, G-Mac? Well, we could probably do that, Roy. Yeah. Roy, I'm on great demand since I won the Open. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm really traveling. Uh, my, my, my eyes are sticking out of my head, really. I'm so tired. Could cross so many time zones. Uh-huh. You got any tips for me? Who, uh, who, who's involved? In Doc, this? you're not listening. Who's involved? Are you involved with, uh, that, with that man? Yeah, if you'd pay attention, you would know. But are you, you and that man doing, doing this show? No, you're supposed to be Roy Walker. Are you, are you and Sir Richard doing it? He's supposed to be doing Roy. You're supposed to be doing Roy well, What am I supposed to do Roy for? <laughs> I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I know what you've been I'm on plenty. I'm having a little bit of, bit of problem here with my putting. Everything seems to be going to the right. But I know that you've had some experience on celebrity cruises. I know you've been down the Orinoco, and you've been down yeah, the Nile, down and down the Amazon. And, and the I was Vikings. just wondering, uh, how do you pass the time? I, I can't really understand what a person does during one of those cruises. I believe you and Mr. Anderson had some experience on cruises. I believe Mr. Anderson locked himself in his cabin for two weeks and wouldn't speak to anyone. That's right. That's right. You wouldn't come out. Everyone was saying, where's Jerry Anderson? Is this the Jerry Anderson ghost cruise? They couldn't see him. Well, why are you? Do you mix a lot with the people when you get on a cruise? Well, I try to. Yeah, I go around. I just introduce myself to people. And do you play cards have, with them? Do you play cards little, with them? Have a little drink with them and sit, find, try and find out what part of Belfast they're from. You know, because it's nice, you know, Jerry. It's nice meeting people from home. You know, I've been away a lot, you know. And so then when you get a, a situation like that on a boat, you know, I like to talk to people, but not like you. You sat in your... Your little cabin. I uh, just saying you suddenly like arse. Is that what you're trying to say? Really, that's what you meant to really say. Well, I wouldn't like to say it. Here, I want to ask you two guys something now that you're there. I'm told there's a cinema in Belfast. Yeah. It's called the QFT. Yes. Oh, yeah. And you don't sell that old popcorn stuff, and you, it's very classy. Do you know what you can get there? You can yeah. get drink there. Yes. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.